Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm going to be responding to U.S. News and World Report's 2022 dietary rankings. Where did they put a vegan diet there in the mix? Where did it land? Do I agree with where it landed? I'm just going to go ahead and say no right now. And we're going to look into the way they prioritize different diets and scored a little bit. And obviously, I'm going to be nitpicking some of the research they chose to use or not use. I will also say there were several diets on there that I had never heard of before, so I had to do some research into those and I had a few of you guys recommend this directly to me so here we go there's nearly 40 diets so let's just focus on the top five to start and that brings me to the number one diet they have which is the Mediterranean diet I am happy that there's a more plant-based diet here on the top, although yes, it does include various animal products. And I just have to think, if you're looking at this in terms of how people in the US might try to adopt these diets to make a difference versus the original Mediterranean diet. Now they say this is a very easy diet to follow, but I think in that context, it's going to be an easy diet to trick yourself into thinking that you follow of just, oh yeah, I love putting olive oil on everything and drinking wine but I feel like people are just gonna go out and get drunk at like the Olive Garden and just eat a bunch of refined wheat and forget how much meat they're actually eating. <laughs> I'm being cynical here, but on to number two, we have a tie between the Dash diet and the Flexitarian diet. At this point, I filmed five minutes worth of rambling about the details of the remaining top five diets, but simply put, all of them but one are reduced cetarian diets that tell you to eat more plant foods and less animal fat, but still allow animal products in lesser amounts, DASH is less sodium, the MIND diet is a combo of the Mediterranean and DASH diets, the Mayo Clinic one costs $50 a month, TLC is about cholesterol lowering, Volumetrics is just more soup, more volume, all of them less animal fat, more plants, but a diet that tied for number five that didn't make sense to me was WW, the artist formerly known as Weight Watchers. Apparently they changed their name a couple years ago to seem less like weight focused. I don't know. Uh, they gave it a pretty dang high health score considering, quote, no foods are off limits. If you're drooling for a double cheese pizza, go for it. And look, you can eat this bacon and egg sandwich. And guess what? Their health score was 4.4 out of five. And that was based off absolutely no research on actual disease outcomes or prevalence in people that follow this diet. Just some, what I consider to be not very persuasive studies on weight loss, or should I call it W loss? <laughs> In general, though, this seemingly long list of studies is over and over again just saying that it outperformed basic nondescript counseling, which is not impressive, but to a meta-analysis like this, it was outperformed by other diets in that study. So I'm not like, this is amazing and should be top five. If anything, it keeps highly addictive processed foods in your diet, probably leaving people unsatiated all the time and puts this crazy point system on everything, which you know, for some people might be okay, but for other people who might have an eating disorder tendency would be like a nightmare. This would just breed an eating disorder overnight. Anyway, I'd have to do a whole video on a lot of these diets to do them fully justice, but let's see what we have between six and number 17. In there we have a vegetarian diet. We also have an Ornish diet. Ornish received number one in terms of heart healthy diet on this list. So at least in that sense, congratulations, Mr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Dean Ornish. But then again, it's like right there with him, you have Jenny Craig, which I was a little bit confused because it's also a exercise plan involved there, which seems, you know, a little different. They also have Dr. Wiles diet. And this is a guy who I've just seen over and over again make pseudoscientific claims. I mean, there's write-ups like this one that go into detail about them. So I'm surprised that he's on here when they put something like spoiler alert for cert food diet, which I'm not really gonna cover, is like way down at the bottom for not being science-based. Anyway, scrolling down past some more random diets, down down at number 17, we have a vegan diet. They ranked it as a very middle of the road diet. I'm just happy that it beat out the low carb diets, which are thankfully all at the bottom. We have things like Atkins and Paleo and Keto and Whole30 down at the bottom. Makes me happy. And I will say they gave it a lower health score than I would have given it, obviously. <laughs> and uh, we have to remember that the Weight Watchers was 4.4 out of five. The vegetarian diet was actually 4.2 out of five. They gave the vegan diet just a 3.3 out of five, which is interesting because 
So many studies again and again show that a vegan diet outperforms a vegetarian diet in terms of various disease risks. You know, for example, vegans in the US average normal BMI when the vegetarians average overweight. With such a weight emphasis ranking, I think they would have picked up on that, but they didn't anyway. There also seems to be somewhat of a anti-vegan bias, at least in the copy that they wrote here. For example, they open up a vegan health segment with this recent study on children that only covered six children. <laughs> now, the way they present this seems, again, biased, but also just not very educated. They start off by saying the study was published in, in Science Daily, which was actually just a news site and not a journal. It was published in a completely different journal. And one of the shots that they fire at veganism in that paragraph is that the vegan children were low in LDL and HDL cholesterol, which are essential amino acids. You know, acting as if that is some bad like protein deficiency. No, cholesterol is a lipoprotein. It's not an essential amino acid, especially we make our own, so it's not essential. But a huge point here, if you're looking at this study itself, the researchers completely failed to mention that the omnivore control group averaged at an LDL over 100 at a very young age, which will absolutely lead to some heart disease deaths down the line. Instead, the study and the US News authors point to these six vegans having lower levels of vitamin A and vitamin D in a very misleading way, not only because the charts have a weird scale to make it look like the vegans are at like zero, it's that none of the children that were vegan were deficient in either of those. They were just a little bit lower in the normal range. Instead, they make it seem like, oh no, all these vegans are deficient on their diet. Oh no, our vegans, they're broken. It's also weird that they didn't sound the alarm that a bunch of the omnivore children had very low folate levels. It's a small chart, but 360 is the cutoff for deficiency. A bunch of those children, meat eaters, were there, past there, or very close, and the vegans did really well in folate. And again, folate is like the main cause of birth defects worldwide when it's low. Another thing you'll see criticized was the DHA level, but they did another tricky thing where they randomly decided to put some pescatarians in with the vegetarian group, therefore singling out vegans alone as having lower DHA, but those vegetarians do not eat fish as well. They would have been exactly the same. And vegetarian populations do great. I mean, look, they were number nine on here on this list. And those vegan kids did well in terms of zinc and iron. And so, yeah, I'd love to see more studies on vegan children, but I'm just not very compelled by this one. They also really emphasize how hard it is to be on a vegan diet. It only got 1.7 out of five in terms of easy to follow. And I had to look at how they got these rankings and it turns out they had an expert panel that just sort of wrote down what they felt about each diet on a scale of one to five and then they put that together. Well, it appears that none of these experts have tried a vegan diet, at least anytime recently, because it is getting heck of a lot easier. I mean, compared to something like Weight Watchers, which they ranked like twice as easy, where you have to count points in every little thing you eat. Well, no, you just have a transition period when you're vegan. And then two or three weeks in, a vegan diet becomes just like muscle memory. At least that's my experience and the experience of a lot of other people. But I was happy to see that these experts did rank a vegan diet high in terms of heart health at number four and in terms of diabetes health at number two. But it's kind of strange that with those two huge diseases, one of them being the leading killer, doing so well in that, and then pff, number 17. Shows where their priorities are. They also had you know, some good studies in there on the weight loss effects, but they left out the Broad study. They left out that vegans average normal BMI in the US, so they didn't score it as high as I think it should have been. And it was really interesting because right past a vegan diet, they put the Engine 2 diet, which is of course Rip Esselstyn, Dr. Esselstyn's son and his diet, which is a vegan diet that is focused more on whole foods and meant to be a heart disease reversal diet. And the fact that it did worse in terms of heart health ranking was just weird. Then beyond that, there's about another 20 diets, which are thankfully very low carb toward the bottom, which is nice to see. I mean, we have to just, emphasize that increased risk of all-cause mortality we're seeing across meta-analyses in terms of low-carb diets. They belong down there. In the end, though, I feel like there are a lot of contradictions within this list. They essentially just like these uh, flexitarian-style diets, and that's why they're all just boom almost the same diet over and over again at the top. And then, of course, there were some experts that clearly didn't like how hard a vegan diet was and how apparently unhealthy a vegan diet was, you know, based off some weak evidence for some nutrient issues. 
Again, I do have to appreciate the plant-based slant that this has, that people who are searching for a heart-healthy diet will see Ornish at the top and they won't see something like Whole30 or Keto. But to give a diet where you're including a double cheese pizza and bacon and egg sandwiches a higher health ranking than a vegan diet or a whole food vegan diet beyond that, is uh, definitely in my book, very wrong. All right, that's it for today. Let me know what you think about these rankings. Which diet do you think uh, was surprising for you? So feel free to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.